Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecturelet, introducing the Lambda Calculus. Now I know what you're thinking. I got into linguistics to avoid calculus. Well, this isn't the same thing. This is just the broad use of the term, and it employs Lambda as an operator, and so it gets the name Lambda Calculus. So what is the Lambda Calculus? Well, it's pretty simple, actually, uh, once you understand it. But it's actually going to be extremely useful for us as a method of formalizing functions. And that's why it was created by Alonzo Church way back in the 30s when he was trying to uh, un, you know, get a better sense of how computation worked. And he did a pretty good job because a lot of his work would go on to be uh, seminal in computer science and programming and so forth. I don't think he foresaw the use of lambda calculus in semantics, but it became uh, very widespread after Montague and others developed compositional approaches. And... Uh, Nowadays, it's pretty much the standard as far as uh, making, as form, as far as formalizing and expressing the functions of composition. Now, how does it work? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you have the lambda. It, essentially, it takes a function, and in the lambda calculus, you rewrite it as a variable in a binder. So, if you look at the handout in number one, f of x equals x squared, standard function. Well, we would write that in the lambda calculus as lambda x, x squared. And in essence, that expression replaces f. And then x is the argument you plug into it. So if you have that, and if f of 3 equals 3 squared equals 9, then we take this lambda x, x squared, plug 3 into it, we get 3 squared, and that also equals 9. So how does that work for us in the semantics? Well, essentially, we're going to replace the functions with lambda expressions. Remember that the denotation of, let's say, a verb like smokes is the set of smokers. And it's also the characteristic function that gets us that set of smokers. And that's in 3a, function from d to the truth values, uh, such that for all x in d, f of x equals 1 if and only if x smokes. So far, so good. Well, we can replace that with 3b, the lambda expression, which means the same thing. Now, how do we break down a lambda expression? Well, they all have three basic parts. The first part is the argument variable, and it's going to be tied to a lambda operator. And that's an argument variable. The second part is the domain condition that specifies what kind of object the variable is representing. And there are different ways to write all these things, but we're going to adopt this uh, convention here. And then the third part is the value condition. And they're separated by a dot. So you have argument, domain, dot, and then the value condition. And we'll write it like this, smokes of x. So we have lambda x in d smokes of x. So the value condition is written like this in a function argument style. That's really a mnemonic. It's, this whole value condition is an abbreviation for the actual value condition, which is 1 if x smokes and 0 if x doesn't. And instead of writing all of that out, we just write it like this. So what this is, this entire thing, is a function. Now, how does that work in our semantics? Well, since the lambda expression is equivalent to the function that we've been writing, we can switch them out as we like. So in 7, uh, we have the sentence, Alyssa smokes. The meaning of Alyssa is Alyssa. And the meaning of smokes is this function, lambda x in d smokes of x. Now, if we look at uh, the tree in 8, uh, that's our syntax. And then we go down to the uh, semantic tree. Uh, and then how does that, you know, and then we replace these uh, denotations out with their equivalents. So Alyssa, uh, smokes, and so forth. Now at the top, we have lambda x and d smokes of x in brackets, and then Alyssa. What is that? Well, that's the result of functional application. Now, if you look at page two, we'll see what we do with that. So what do we do with that? Well, this is where we will end up uh, doing a process that's called beta reduction 
in the lambda calculus, and it's very convenient because it corresponds exactly to functional application. So, let's we'll start with the function argument notation. And we can put this in brackets, it's convenient. And what is the argument of this entire function? Well, it's a list of. Now, this is where some people get confused. They see this, this is function argument notation. But this is not the argument of the function. That's where the little, some people get confused. This is the argument. The entire lambda expression is the function. So this is the f, and this is the x. So how are we going to do that? Well, how do we, how do, we uh, do our beta reduction? So we find the argument variable at the left edge of the lambda expression. In this case, it's lambda x. Then we find every instance of this variable in the value condition. There's only the one. Then we replace every instance of the variable in the value condition with the argument. So we run it through the leftmost variable and we put it in to the argument. And then that becomes smokes Alyssa. At that point, we get rid of the argument, because we plugged it in. And we get rid of the lambda variable, because we've saturated it. And what we end up with is simply smokes of Alyssa. And just as this was an abbreviation, smokes of x was an abbreviation for 1 if x smokes, 0 if it doesn't. Smokes of Alyssa is an abbreviation for 1 if, x, if Alyssa smokes and 0 if she doesn't. And that's the truth conditions, right? That's what we wanted. And so we can now rewrite the tree uh, with this at the top. And this is what that sentence means. Right. And that's, that's it. That's the process. Now, when we're doing lambda uh, expressions, we want to watch out for two basic uh, pitfalls. People do it all the time, uh, but you want to watch out for them because they will mess up your day. The first one is what we call vacuous binding. And that occurs when you have a binder that doesn't bind anything. So what you want to do is make sure that every argument variable has a representation in the value condition. So if you have an x over here, you better have an x in here somewhere. If you have a z, you better have a z and so forth. Right? Because if you don't, when you plug stuff into x, it just disappears. So there's an example here. Um, if you have, let's say, let's convert this to lambda x in d, smokes of Melissa, and let's plug in bill. Well, we plug in bill here, and then where does it go? There's no x for it to go to. It will just disappear off into the ether. Who knows what happens to it? It's gone. And we end up with smokes Alyssa. Again, that is to say, this is a weird function that will take bill and map it to 1 if Alyssa smokes and 0 if Alyssa doesn't smoke. What about bill? Well, we don't know. That kind of function, is, in theory, could exist, but we don't observe them in natural language. So don't do that. Make sure x has, you know, every, every variable is binding something. The other mistake people often make is an unbound variable. So if you have a variable in the value condition, make sure it's bound, there's a lambda. You know, make sure there's a lambda for it. So if you have x in here, you better have x, uh, lambda x out here. If you have uh, r here, you better have lambda r out here somewhere. And the reason is, if this isn't bound, we don't know what it means. So if you say, like in 9, lambda x, x sees y, you plug in bill, you get bill sees y. Well, who's y? We haven't saturated the expression yet. So if you don't bind a variable, you get something that's unsaturated. If you forget, if you, if you vacuously bind, then you get meaningful expressions whose meaning gets lost. And we violate principles of compositionality. So don't do those things. Watch out. Make sure for each variable, you need uh, some kind of binder. And for each binder, you need variables. 
that's the lambda calculus in a nutshell. It's that simple. It doesn't really get more complicated than that, except that we'll see we'll have different kinds of arguments and we'll stack them in different ways, and we'll see that in short order.